I would never do that at night. I figured eBay would be the place to do it. Now, I really haven't used eBay. I know it's a huge site and, and thousands and thousands, well, billions of people use the site. But um, it was fairly easy to set up. I posted it and let you guys bid on it and immediately got fake bids, shill bidders. I found out what a shill bidder is. And I couldn't really understand why people would do that. Like, what? I don't understand that. So apparently, uh, you can go on eBay, those of you that did not know, and you could be five years old, you could be 50, it really doesn't matter. You make a profile and you can bid $100,000 if you want. And then when you win the bid, you can uh, not pay it. And there have been plenty of cases, I read it on eBay forums and stuff like that, where people just can't get their money. A buyer wins the bid, they send them an invoice, and they don't pay them. And they never get their money. And then they have to relist the posting and throw in all of these, um, you know, restrictions for bidders and everything like that. I did not know anything about this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that a website as big as eBay uh, is so unreliable, really, and is not protected. So, um, either way, it's still on eBay. It's still listed. Like I said, I'm listing it for 10 days from when I uploaded my last video. And um, I am heavily monitoring, and I have a couple of people actually heavily monitoring my eBay posting. So if I see any suspicious bids, uh, by anybody that has no stars, if I see any automatic bids by people that have no stars, things like that, they will be deleted. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give everyone a chance to buy it. And in doing so, I was going to also, and I'm, I still am, donate to St. Jude Children's Hospital. I'm going to donate a portion of whatever it sells for. So I figured why not give back? And St. Jude Children's Hospital is a, um awesome charity, an incredible charity that pretty much gives 90% of your dollar to uh, the charity, which is which is great. So that's what I'm doing. Anyways, we are arriving to Wesley's shop right now. I didn't tell Andy I was coming, so he's probably like, why is he here? What are you doing? Walking over to say hi to your gate tomorrow. Why do you sound like you've been up for like five years straight? You want to see something cool? I'm tired. Jesus. What? That's a twin turbo Corvette. Oh, there she is. Look at that. It was kind of funny because the picture of this car like this, mm -hmm. this here reminds me a lot of the front end of a ZL1. And I was like, what the hell? He's not doing a twin turbo ZL1. <laughs> because you said about having a surprise at Camaro Fest. Or something like that. And I was like, wait, what the hell is he taking a... Oh. Is he taking it? Yeah, what was that about? Well, it's the video that comes on at 6 o'clock tonight, which I know that ain't going to be made by 6 o'clock tonight. No. But uh, <laughs> it's, I, I put down, I was like, I got a new tattoo from Camaro Fest. Oh, is that what it was? That's <laughs> yeah, your stupid that's clickbait? Like, Jesus. That's my clickbait, yeah. Oh. It's giving me good clickbait, too, because it's a picture of me and the chick tattooing me. And I'm like, it hurts. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. <laughs> Welcome to YouTube, where it's an endless <laughs> amount of people who just clickbait for I learned years. from Street Speed 717. I don't do that. Anyways. Westy, look at this thing. Oh my God. You building a race car? Yeah, it's a real race car there. Yeah, figured. Some poser with Camaro. How so, do you plan to hook this up to your car without cables? Or is this, is it, do we just put this there and make it look like you have this? 
That's exactly what it's for. This is the mystery part that I was talking about earlier in the video. You want to tell everybody what that is, Westy? This is the mystery part that he was talking about. Now, this is a battery disconnect. Needed to pass tech for uh, NHRA. So, what this does is, let's get it out of the plastic. We don't need those, those are, those are dead destruction. So what this does is, it's necessary that this is mounted to the outside of the vehicle so that from the rear of the vehicle, or rather the outside of the vehicle, uh, someone can turn. This is the normal position where your battery is on, car runs, but in the event of a crash or, or something uh, that they feel they need to kill power to the car, the, an NHR official simply turn that off. It opens this switch and kills power to the whole car. And there you have it. And I think we're gonna place it. What do you think, Westy? Right there. I was thinking on the roof, actually. In place of the antenna? Yeah. I don't know if I'll pass tech it's kind of hard to reach. Yeah. Since it's flat, that's flat, and that's flat, and that's usually where people put them. Pop your trunk there, brother. All right. Conveniently, the fifth gen Camaro has the battery located in the trunk. Oh, you put your cover on. Yeah, only because... Uh, well, it makes it a nice flat floor now. Yes, so, you know, I can get groceries and whatnot. So there's the bat. And I guess, really, I mean, so you have, you'd have to drill through. If that's where it comes through there, you'd have to. Well, we're gonna have to drill through this back header. Yeah. And then, obviously, we're gonna have to take the bumper cover off. I think the first order of operation is to close this garage door because I'm tired of being blinded by the sun. Yeah. I feel like we were complaining about the cold. Now we're complaining about the sun. We just complain about all types of weather here in Pennsylvania. Us rubber in here about I think your tires are coming apart no it's nothing to see there just continue with the job did you run over a bunch of tires on the way well out? I remember like most of this part of the tire was actually still here but apparent somehow it got up on this part of it I don't even know uh, you might want to write these people about that tell them yeah. the tires don't stay together that they wind up stuck to the inside of your fender wells yeah it's weird I've never seen anything like it So right now the switch is basically just mounted on the rear bumper. We haven't wired it up to the battery or the alternator. So in order for this to pass the NHRA rules, it needs to kill the alternator as well. So we have to basically send a wire all the way up to the alternator. So this not only kills the battery, but it kills the alternator as well. So that won't be wired up tonight, but uh, we will do that in the very near future. You should come simulate what would happen and how you use that switch if this was a track situation. Oh, oh no! Is Nick okay? No, he's dead. <laughs> oh, well, I'll turn it back on. <laughs> so yes, that's what happens. That switch is there so somebody can run over and turn, basically kill the power to your car if it's, so it doesn't catch fire or whatever happens if you would crash. That's another safety precaution that the NHRA requires that you take. What he said, I recommend uh, Bido Coco, coconut water with pineapple. It's jam packed with naturally occurring electrolytes, has more potassium than a banana. Hydrate and feel great. I'm out of here. 
Anyways, special thanks to Westy for helping me install that part. I'll have all of his info in the description. You have to check him out. Also, I'll have the info for the battery cutoff switch in the description as well. So I finally got a chance to take my car to the track and race it with the new setup. So you guys will have to stay tuned for that video. As always, follow all of my social media, which will be in the description of this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Have a great day.